Hello everyone, good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Um, today we are um, doing another Career Pathway series. I'm Wendy Winston, lead uh, specialist here with the Supported Employment and Education Program. Um, we are going to be introducing you to some more career pathways that you could possibly explore during your exploration as a young adult um, going into um, your young adulthood. So listen up and if you have any questions, feel free to drop into Owen's place and chat with us. Today we have Jovan Siner. Um, he's a machine operator and we are going to learn all about um, a day in the life and get some more information about it. All right, here we go. How y'all doing? Tell us about um, how long you've been in the field. Um, um, I'm really not a machine operator. I'm a compound batch mixer. Okay, all right. So, uh, Tell us what the difference is. The difference is, is that I uh, mix hazardous materials and a machine operator. It could be a CNC machine operator or uh, you can operate multiple machines, but they're mostly dealing with machines cutting metal and putting in parameters to cut out stuff with metal. As opposed to me, I drive a fork truck and I mix components to make one complete, complete batch. Okay, what does that mixing look like? What does that training look okay, like? Uh, Tell us a little bit. I have a, a mixture that goes about, I'm gonna say probably 15, 16 feet in the air on the tower. And it's probably about 20 feet wide. It held about 4,000 pounds. So each component that I put into the mixer is to make a bigger batch for a metal casting plant that deals with cars. Okay, so so that, who's your customers? Yeah, who's your customers? The customers are, um, we got people, we also make the, uh, the pellets that go inside the little alkaline batteries. Okay. So we make those. <coughs> <clears throat> any car parts so rotors brakes engines water pumps the um, product that I make is used for them to sprinkle sprinkle onto the molding castings okay so that they come out smooth so you to before the, the, the cast right okay right so or when they break the cast open they can they can sprinkle the dust on there so you wouldn't have any particles that stay from the um, water pump or the the rotor mm -hmm. so that it comes out smooth each time. Okay. Tell me a little bit about a day in the life. Okay, so I uh when I go to work, my seven AM as soon as I get there it's a seven AM meeting. We discussing what's going on in the morning and for the rest of the shift. What my what my day entails. Before I even get my day started, I have to do a forklift inspection, make sure my lift is in order, no cracks, no leaks, no, um, no holes ruptured on the forklift, make sure it's functioning properly, make sure everything working with the lift, and I have to do an area inspection as well to where when I go to my area, I have to make sure all my pinch points, my guardrails, my signs, everything has to be up in my area. And if it's not, then I have to put, it's a hazard over there and it has to be corrected before I can start my shift. Okay, so that's all before you even- Before I even started. start doing any mixing, I have to make sure that my area and my lift is properly, is functioning properly. Okay, so I have a couple questions about some of the things you said. So okay. you do, you drive a forklift. Yes. Okay, how, does that certification come with that job? Did you come with that? How did you get that certification? Or does it require certification to drive yeah, a forklift? Yeah, um, well, I've been driving a fork truck since, I've been driving a fork truck for probably like the last 10 years. But okay. The job would, you would have to have some forklift experience to obtain the job because the job is all, is driving. It's just driving a forklift. You have to be able to handle the materials because each, each sack that I pick up might weigh 2,000 pounds and I'm a strong guy, but you know, I ain't lifting that. <laughs> you know I mean? Okay. But uh, 
Yeah, so each sack weighs about 2,000 pounds. So they will certify you on a forklift, but they will want you to come in with some type of experience. Okay. We, they don't need you just knocking stuff around because everything that we do on a fork truck, you might have somebody over here to your right and to your left. We're going to be in close quarters with these fork trucks and operating them. So everybody has to be able to operate the fork truck pretty well Okay. in order to work there. Okay. And then I wanted to go back into, so before you even start, start the shift, like that safety, that safety check, um, what are the fundamental skills you think are involved in those safety checks? Like, you know, it sounds like you got to be paying attention to detail. Yeah, you, gotta, um, you definitely got to have attention to detail because if, um, if there's a crack in the in the lift, in the um, metal metal part of the lift, or if it's a hose that's ruptured, I'm suspending a sack that with that's two thousand pounds. I'm suspending it in the air, and I'm putting it above above a mixer. So at any time, if a hose rupture or any time, that sack is coming in straight down. Mm. So if the fork truck isn't working properly in the beginning. It's no need for you to even try to lift anything with the truck. Right. If, if that takes place, then you are going to endanger yourself and others around you. What type of safety gear does, so I'm sure there's other um, other positions at your job that I want to get to, um, and I'm sure it all works together to, 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 to get the uh -huh. end product, but like what what is the safety gear that your particular position uh, Oh, wears? okay, okay. You know, yeah. Now, I gotta I gotta I gotta wear the hard hat all day and the um and the dust mask because Tell us about both and their purpose. Well the hard hat is this is OSHA certified because if anything falls on your head, well if a two thousand pound sack falls on you, I mean you're done. The hard hat ain't gonna this it's not gonna stop that. You know what I'm saying? But we got a lot of other things going on in the plant, like a uh like, it's a wrapper that we pull, and a pole just hangs. If that hits you in the head, you can mm -hmm. be cut. Or mm -hmm. when you're walking, walking through doorways, anything can fall on you in the plant. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're dealing with metal and sometimes, and you're going up and down stairs. Any, just anything. A bag can fall on your head at a 50-pound bag. You know what I'm saying? So you got to protect your head the whole Definitely. time. Yeah. So that's the entire shift. The entire shift, you. I um, I even wear a mask on my face because I'm 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 in dust all day. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So this the dust mask stops you from breathing in the hazardous materials. You gotta have that all sh all shift. It's the PPE, safety glasses, and gloves. Okay. I ain't have the safety glasses or gloves, guys, but, <laughs> but they, it, they're it, on. it is required. Yes. Yes, all day because probably two weeks ago we had a guy that uh. He was mixing a liquid batch, and he didn't wear the proper gloves, and he burnt his skin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta have the proper stuff on when you're dealing with chemicals. Do they provide this? Yes, they provide everything at the plant. Yeah, everything is provided. Okay. But like the respirator isn't though. I um I took it upon myself to buy my own respirator. You know, okay. up, a step a grade up. You know what I mean? To okay. upgrade the respirator. But they got normal face respirators, you know what I'm saying? But I care a little bit more about Absolutely. You know, so. What about shoes? Oh, steel toes all day. Okay. You gotta, you gotta have on steel toes. I uh when guys get steel toes normally they just get the some they just go get the Walmart brand. I would prefer people to I would recommend that people buy a good pair of steel toes because you're gonna be on your feet all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you just buying something cheap, it might wear out and it might not be good for you. Okay. And stand around on your feet all day. So I'm on my feet all day. I, I wear steel toes. And I buy them a size bigger just to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's comfortable. Okay. Because you got to be on your feet all day. And you were talking about um, kind of like all day, you know, you're moving things and somebody to the left of you, somebody to the right of you. Things are, there's constant moving, different stations doing different things. So yes. another one of those skills sound like you have to be um, watchful, of, like oh, in space at like all times. So no cell phones, no, no talk no, about no, the, no. talk about that piece. Uh, the cell phones ain't required on the, 
they don't want the cell phones on the floor. Uh, I have somebody that, so I'm in the blender here, and there's somebody right next to me in another blender. So me and me and this other person is working in close quarters, and he's doing he's doing the same job that I'm doing, but with different materials. Okay. So he's mixing. He might be making a different batch, but he's still suspending the same two thousand pound sack in the air that I'm suspending each time. So we have to stay alert and up. You know, some people fall asleep on forklifts. Mm -hmm. So you, is when you let go home at night, you got to get your sleep. Okay. Because when you get up in the morning, you got to be bright eyed on these fork trucks, man. Fork trucks kill people. They kill us. I'm telling you right now that if you're not paying attention, people die on four trucks. They die. That's that's what they known for. So you got to be able to operate this forklift in close quarters, and it's almost like you can't. Don't drive for the person. Don't drive for you. Drive for the person around you. That's that's what it is. You got to pay attention. Absolutely. So you talked to you kind of hit on that balance that's required with kind of like your personal life and. Your yeah. work life. Please elaborate. You know, you talked about your rest, you know. Oh, you, I mean, some days I do 10s, some days I do 12s. Hour shifts. Hour shifts. Yeah, so the, the days that I do 10s or the days that I do 12s, sometimes I got to be up at 4 to get there at 5. And if you're not properly rested, they'll send you home. Hmm. You, 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 Cause you're operating a machine that could possibly kill somebody and you falling and you nodding off and you falling asleep. So if you're not properly rested, they don't, they don't want you okay. operating the fork truck at all. Do you all. see that happening at your current place? No, I haven't seen it happen, but I have seen accidents take place on sure. the fork trip. I've seen people ram into walls, knock walls down. And unfortunately, you know, I've seen people tip over fork trucks with 4,000 pound loads on them. You know what I'm saying? And fortunately, nobody was hurt. That was, that was the upside of it. But once you do that, that kind of scares you from driving a fork truck. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of don't want to operate it no more. Mm -hmm. That's like the end of it. Right. Yes. What's the enjoyable part? <laughs> I know, right? We're sitting here no, talking it's about not. It, we're talking about safety. We're Negative. talking about resting. Um, we're talking about paying attention to detail, which are a lot of things that are required in a lot of jobs, you know, um, in a lot of professions. It's important to take care of yourself, to be well rested, to pay attention, you know what I'm saying, follow yeah. regulations. All of, that's, all of that's important. Um, so, you know, I don't take it as negative parts. I think it's parts to pay attention to. <laughs> no, and, I just you know, like <laughs> I don't want to come across like that. I, like, I enjoy my job. I know I just, you do. I like, I I like you know. working there, you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of downtime. So, like, after I put my load in the mixer, it's got to blend twice. And they, it's eight, minute of, eight minutes a piece. So, that's 16 minutes that I'm just... I'm just chilling or standing there. You know what I'm saying? During that 16 minutes, use the bathroom, go get me a soda, just chill out, get me some water. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the part of the process. I can't rush the process. Okay. So during that time, after I drop my load, I do it all over again and I got another 16 minutes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, that's my whole day though. You know what I'm saying? Just repetitive, doing that for all day. Absolutely. And then once you get, a, I mean, you should get a number of batches done, at least about five to six batches per day. And then, hey, it's time to go home. The day really goes fast at my job. Really fast. Yeah. Like, man, you talking. If I go there for 12, it's going to feel like I don't work like eight. Because the days go fast. When you, okay. I mean, when you ain't watching the clock, days move. Sure. And so with these batches, are there um, like production and productivity requirements, production requirements throughout the day, um, numbers that, that have to be met, any inspections yes. that have to be done after the load is, is done? Yeah, so, so after I'm done with a batch, 
Um, we got quality control, meaning that like, when I get done, I have to take a sample of my finished product to see if it's even past the specs of the finished product. But you know I pass all the time. All so right, all right. That's what I do. That's you know what, what you I mean? do. <laughs> I ain't had to come back yet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But, no, but after I'm done, it, and that's just not me. That's the whole plant. Everybody has to take inspection bags, takes quality bags to the lab, and they have to be tested to make sure that we're sending out good product. Okay, so that's not done by you. That's done by the QA, yeah, yeah. the quality assurance. Yes, the QC, the quality okay. control. That quality control, gonna okay. Get, they're going to run through the bags. They're going to make sure the product that we're sending out is good. And if it's not, then they're going to... So if I got one if I got one sack, if I, out of a batch, I'm probably going to get two sacks. But out of a work order, I'm going to make 20 bags. And that's going to include 10 batches. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So if out of those 10 batches, one of my bags are bad, they're going to reject the whole load. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because the custom, they're not going to risk the customer saying, I got this bag that's bad and that bag that's bad, and we found that only this bag was bad. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not going to, they're just not going to take their chance when you're in um, a customer service driven job. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. That could maybe cost a contract. Exactly. Or um, yeah, for sure. And a lot of our uh, shipments go over to like Germany, China, and some of them are air freighted. So you talking about a, a $60,000 load to air freight it and for it to get there and be rejected, now they have to, the company has to cover the cost coming back. So they, they never got paid for the initial 60 grand that they paid to air freight it the load, and then they still gotta cover the cost to come back because the product is bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. it's a lot of checks and balances before you even, before your material is even shipped out. And is that um, other individuals who do yeah. the checks and balances? How does the system work together? Okay, after I, after I do my batch, or I finish my work order, for the day, I take all my sample bags to the lab. It's gonna be like 20, 25 sample bags, depending on how big my load is. <clears throat> I take them all to the bag, I take them all to quality control, and they sample each bag. And if each bag passes quality, then it's able to be shipped. And when it's, if it's able to be shipped, it's wrapped and put on a container. Now, I just, we just had somebody today that only had 13 bags, but the batches failed quality. They failed quality. And the truck was sitting outside waiting for that load. So we had to pay a, a demerger fee, a $200 fee, for every hour that the truck sat there waiting for that load. And it waited like two or three hours. You see what I'm saying? So. Right. If you're not, that's why you gotta be precise at what you're doing when you're making these batches because it's gonna cost you. You can get, you're gonna potentially get fired if you keep making bad products. No, nobody's gonna keep mm -hmm. taking those losses. Well, it sounds like you do a good job of making sure yours are on point. How do you do that? Um, we go back to the attention to detail. And number one, you gotta. I, um, everybody that I train, that I bring in, the first thing I start with is the shop order. You got to be able to read the shop order down to every material. So we have a warehouse that's just full of materials. It's just full of materials. It's, it's probably, it's three warehouses. We got warehouse one, two, and three, and they're full of different materials. So each batch has a number and a poundage that I have to put into the batch. Okay. So my batch today required 800 pounds of red, red cast, 2,000 pounds of cornstarch, and I mixed them together. 
giving me a 2,800 pound load, 1,400 pounds in each sack. So every time I do that, almost lost my train of thought. That's all right, that's all right. We're talking about what, uh, how do you make sure that your bags yeah, are quality and pass the quality control? We're back. We're back. Uh, by paying attention to the shop order. Okay. Yes, the shop order by putting exact, the precise weight that you have to put into the, the into each batch is what you go by. So and those instructions are on the order? On, on the shop order. Okay. You can't, it's, it, they really kind of make it dummy proof, I'm serious. Like you can't really go wrong unless you're out there grabbing the wrong material. Okay. If you go out there and you grab the wrong material, like it's, it's plenty of new people in the job that come and be like, hey, Javon, it's right. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, no, that's mm -hmm. wrong. That's the wrong mm -hmm. material, bro. You, you can't put that material in there. You can't do that. Because some of these materials can't be mixed together. Right. Because you will have a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you got to know what you're doing when you're mixing stuff. Some of these materials has got to be, be able to uh, be burned, be burned at a certain temperature. And if you put the wrong material in there, it's not even gonna it's not even gonna burn at all. So talk about that in the beginning when you first started this position. Does the company kind of give any um, education, any classes um, to to learn more about the different products and things like that? No, um, no, they don't. That, that's the that's the training. Uh, when I when I'm training somebody, I gotta have them for like a month. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The training has gotta last for like a month because it's so many products in the warehouse and it's gotta be repetitive because you gonna forget. When you go home and you sit down and you chill, you gonna forget what happened yesterday. It's like, I do so much to wear a second nature. Right. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm used to it because I've been there so long. So I know that product. I know that product. I know that product. But as opposed to somebody that's just coming in new, they're not just gonna know those products. Do they have um, like people that they're yeah, they, able to go to if they have questions? Yeah. So if someone is new, so if there's a young person that's watching this now and they're like, I'm interested, you know, in in going into this field, you know. Um, when I'm first starting out new, is there going to be somebody to help me if I have questions? Yeah, you are, you always going to have somebody to help you. I mean, it, that's that's wherever you go, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you're a new person. Yeah. we always going to help you. We're going to try to get you. We're going to try to get you on the right path. You know what I mean? Because when, I mean, if you fail, we fail. Right. That's, that's, that's the end game of it all. You know okay. what I mean? Because we just wasted our time with you. Mm -hmm. And now you gone. So what are all of the shifts that are available at your current uh, just company? First and second. First and second? Second and second. First is 7 to 3.30. Uh, you, overtime is available. Second is 3.30 to 11. Overtime is available. Okay. Starts off at uh, 18, $18 an hour. So it's good pay. If you do want to go and Try to get into Prince Minerals, you won't have to go through WFA staffing. I forgot where it's located, but if you look it up, WFA staffing, they will get you an interview at Prince Minerals and see where you can go from there. Where is it located? Uh, Prince, Prince Minerals is on 43rd and Green Tree, 4301 West Green Tree. Um, do you know if it's on the bus line? A lot of our young people, it, um, you know, looking at transportation. It is on the bus line. It's on the bus line. It's on the bus line. So is that is that Sherman and Mill Road? Sherman and Green Tree. Sherman and Green Tree. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So it is on the bus lines. It's a couple guys that catch the bus that come to work every day. You know what I'm saying? But remember, if you get on that AM shift, Got to be up even earlier to catch that bus. Mm hmm And get there. And get there. And get on there. time. Cause, and we don't have a great spirit. I'm telling you all now, we don't, ain't no great spirit. You got to be there at mm -hmm. 7 o'clock at 7. If you're there at 701, you late. 701 is late. 701, 701 is, late. is not 7 o'clock. 
That's what the company is. It's hard. It's yeah. hard. I haven't seen it before. Yeah. I haven't seen people get rolled up to 701. So. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about um, another thing with you, uh, Jovan, um, just in regards to how, like, working and the stability that work brings to like the family atmosphere a lot of our young men you know they have families you know um, they new fathers um, right can you speak to like the benefits of the, like the stability of the working and how um, you think that benefits the entire collective the family the community uh, what are your thoughts on that uh, just being a man first and foremost in a in a household, you are like the you're the provider, you're the sole provider. You should be the one that the kids get up. When my kids get up, daddy gone already. They know where I am. I'm at work. You know what I mean? You ain't nothing like bringing that check home. You know what I'm saying? And supporting your family. And I, you know, there's people that you, you can, and there's some people that work and they uh. They're self self employed. I know tow truck people that mm -hmm. but you still have to get up and go get the go get the money. You know what I'm saying? Whether you punch in the clock or not. And the kids, especially if you got boys, that's showing them that, hey, that's what a man does. He gets up and he goes to work every day. He comes home and guess what? He does it all over again. Mm -hmm. It's a routine. You just got to get in the habit of doing it. I fell out of that habit before. You know what I'm saying? And it, it wasn't a bad. It was a bad thing. I mean, you know. And I can't. Hey, I can't do that again. Right. I can't do that again because getting back into the swing of things, getting back into the work, the workforce, it's kind of hard when you haven't been doing it for a while. So just once you start, just stay working. Yeah. Just stay working. Keep working and keep grinding. And, it's gonna pay off. Yes. It's gonna pay off. Yes. It ain't always about something fast, you know. Things take time. You can't you can't rush the process or skip over things and expect the results to be right then Johnny on the spot. It don't work like that. Is that part of your fuel, part of your passion? Um, uh, do you think with the with the everyday with the work? My my passion is uh, getting up, taking care of my family, going to work. You know, making sure that they see me trying to be successful and I'm successful and my kids. It's just creating that culture in your house. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That Well, my wife works too, so you know what I'm saying? We both work. So they see two parents working and building something. You know what I'm saying? So eventually when my kids and my boys come of age, they're going to they gonna know how they're going to see the blueprint. They're going to know how it should be done. Yes. Anything outside of that is going to be unnormal to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just just keep working and keep it going, man. Right? Yeah. Make nothing to it. I think that's a great piece for the, you know, just a good message that, you know, it's part of the blueprint, it's part of the demonstration, yeah. and it's part of the family legacy. And if I can't do it, it can't be done. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Y'all hear that? <laughs> if I can't do it, it can't be done, man. Anything else you want to share about um, Prince? Uh, Prince Minerals. Prince, Prince Minerals, yeah. um, the position, A, hey, the position. I'm um, an operator one at Prince Minerals, and it's all about, you know, the process, man. I tell people at work all the time, when you skip the process, things happen. Things happen. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, it's bad things. Hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because the process is there for a reason. Absolutely. You know, I'm sorry about that. But it's there for yeah. a reason. Yeah, yeah, if you can't, If you can't do what you're supposed to do, they're going to get you out of there. Yeah. You hear me? I'm dead serious. That's, and that, that, ain't, that ain't just for anybody. That's for me, too. Right. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do, they're going to get me out of yeah. it. Yeah. That's just how it is. That's so what it. other positions are, are, are involved in this in this process? So um, so if you come and try to, if you come in and are willing to work for Prince Minerals, they're going to train you on everything that you need to be on. Like you might work on a blue line, you might work on a blender, you might be on a bagger. 
either or you're gonna you're gonna steal each person in Prince Minerals has this chance to do any of those things that I just named, the bagger, the, the blue line, the blender. It depends, it depends on you and your work ethic. Absolutely. And that's a big thing. You know, you gotta have a good work ethic when you come into these companies because that's the only way you're gonna survive. Absolutely, I like that. No, seriously. Well, thank you so much, Jovan. We appreciate it. Um, Thank you for joining. If you have um, any questions for us, make sure that you come into Owens Place. We would love to see you. Stay tuned for our next Career Pathway Series. Peace.